Let's try it again. Hello, can you hear me? Joanne? I can. Yes. Great. Good evening, everybody. So the clerk is going to begin this meeting. Are we ready, Madam Clerk? All right, ready. So we can begin this meeting. Uh, the City Council Committee on Finance, December 7, 2020. Madam Clerk, could you please um, begin this meeting? Call this meeting to order. Roll call, please. Chairman Iguilosi? Present. Vice Chairwoman Ryan? Present. Councilwoman Castillo? Present. Councilman Anthony? Present. Councilman Taylor? Is absent. We have four present and one absent. We have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let the record reflect that uh, Councilman Pedro Espinosa is with us. Ina Coffin and Tino Order is with us. Jimmy Lombardi, Treasurer, is with us. Ernie Almonte, our consultant, is with us. Um, also, Kenny Cheverini, um, our city solicitor, is present. Also, President Pro Tem Correa is present. Doris de los Santos, the chief of staff, is present. Present. And Billy Chapman is present. And I think I have done, folks. Um, so You're first there. of all, I just want to wel welcome everybody for uh, Councilman Anthony. I'm so sorry. I just have to tell you I have to hop off for a 7 o'clock meeting in case I just disappear. Great. Thank you. Thank we don't you. want you to disappear yet. Please don't. Okay. <laughs> so first of all, welcome, everybody. Um, before, before we begin the meeting, hopefully I hope everybody's safe and healthy. I, I, we recognize we're in very, uh, you know, difficult times. Um, you know, uh, we came off a holiday, but we all know that our family and friends and loved ones are in our minds and our hearts. And I hope um, if folks are uh, battling this, uh, uh, this health issue, my, our thoughts and prayers are with them. Uh, the folks that um, are recovering, our thoughts and prayers are with them. And, and our, our, everybody out there to understand that this is a, a moment of reflection and hopefully um, that we all get through it. Hopefully as unscathed as possible, but we understand that this is a reality, and I ask, urge, I urge everybody to be safe, be healthy, um, practice appropriate distancing, and of course, wear your appropriate mask, and et cetera. Um, we want everybody to make it through, and hopefully um, the ones that don't, um, that we all uh, um, share um, a sense of loss together. Um, also, I want to reflect, if we could before we get this meeting, uh, folks don't know, um, 79 years ago, on December 7th, 1941, approximately 2,500 American citizens and soldiers, men and women, died in Pearl Harbor. It was the sneak attack of the Japanese government at the time who um, attacked Pearl Harbor, in which um, began the process for America to enter into World War II. Um, it's important that we reflect upon that sacrifice and the folks that died and that were buried, by the way, in that harbor and the folks that um, joined the armed forces, the call to arms in reaction to that and came together as this country and this great country and to defend this great republic against true oppression, true fascism, true Nazism and true socialism and communism. And we need to always reflect upon those men and women who defended all our freedoms that we enjoy and enjoy today, that we're able to be here tonight and exercise these freedoms that they all sacrifice for all of us to be here and to have in this great republic. So I ask everybody if we could just a moment of silence and prayers for the uh, the folks that are battling, of course, this COVID health um, pandemic and, of course, the lives lost during the um, sneak attack of Pearl Harbor. So a moment, please. Follow us on the experiment. Amen. My Father, Son, Amen. Thank you all for that moment. With that, I also want to thank my committee members and everybody for joining this evening. If we could, we'll go real quick, I believe, Madam Clerk. I believe it's items. Motion to item. Is it one? Is it one, two, and three? And the con motion to continue items one, two, and three. So moved. Motion by Vice Chair. Second okay. by Councilwoman Castillo and Councilwoman Anthony. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Thank you. Next, um, <coughs> item number four, Madam Clerk. Is that the right one? Yes, item number four, please. Resolution authorizing the city treasurer and the mayor, acting on behalf of the city, to issue the refunding bond for the purposes set forth in the resolution and to take all actions deemed necessary to effect the issuance of the refunding bond. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So before we begin, let us, um, the individual who's going to be testifying is Mr. Mancini. Who else, Mr. Mancini? Um, what's it going to I have Mr. Adam Crane from uh, Hilltop Securities and Ms. Karen Grandy from Lock Lord. Okay, so we could have uh, Mr. Mancini, Ms. Grandy, and Mr. Who you said? Craig? Adam Cray. Adam Cray, be sworn in, Madam Clerk. Yes. I do. Uh, Lawrence G. Mancini, Chief Financial Officer, City of Providence. Okay, Ms. Grandy? Uh, yes, Karen uh, Grandy, uh, partner, Lock Lord. Okay. And then, Madam. Thank you. And Mr. Craig. And Mr. Craig, can you hear us, sir? Yes. Could Adam please? Craig, Director of Hilltop Securities. I do. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, before we begin the testimony, let's enter into the record. We have a two-page document, which should be a, entered as an Exhibit A to item number four. It's a two-page document entitled Hilltop Securities, City of Providence, General Obligation Bond Refunding Projections. As of November 23rd, 2020, it's a two-page document. May I enter, the, uh, enter that into the record as Exhibit 4A? Motion to that. So moved. So I moved. Share, I share a second by Councilman Anthony and Councilwoman Castillo. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Mr. Mancini, very quickly, because as you can tell, um, Councilman Anthony has a 7 o'clock thing, and we want to make sure we give everyone an opportunity. So very quickly, explain what is the mis um, major premise of what's before us exactly in two minutes. Go. <laughs> Good evening. Mr. Chairman, uh, as is always our mission, finance and with the council of finance we're always looking for opportunities to be more efficient in every part of the budget this indicates this indication is uh, opportunity in our bond portfolio every regular so often we look to see where there's opportunity to do what's known as a refunding much like a refinancing and it only should be done when it's efficient and there's a savings that's greater than uh, the sufficiency of the remaining bond issue in this particular transaction hilltop securities has presented to you savings that would have that would amount to one million three hundred and thirty thousand seven hundred and sixty eight dollars it will not extend the life of the bond issue any longer than what was expected to be remained which is five years it does not increase the dollar obligation of the city in fact it is a savings of that one million three hundred and thirty thousand one million three hundred and twenty five will be generated prior to the january 15th debt service payment a true savings to the FY21 budget, even though yet to be adopted, it is a saving in the debt service portfolio. Ms. Grandy will testify at your request that this can be done by resolution because it is not incurring an additional bond obligation. Uh, <clears throat> General law 44-5-12-5 rather provides for that opportunity. I have revealed this evening for testimony along with Mr. Cray. In addition to the 2010 refunding, Hilltop Securities is working daily to price a 2013 issue. The reason why that's not in format before you this evening as far as numerical is because it's priced to the market and we're now currently viewing securing bond insurance, which will make those bonds more attractive until that bond insurance has been priced and until we know the market conditions, which change daily, Hilltop Securities will not yet certify whether that issue is worthy of efficiency to pursue, but the resolution covers both issues in the event that that transaction will produce a savings worth of pursuing. Mr. Cray will testify tonight that if that happens, it will save in itself an additional 300000 if pricing holds true in the market in the next 10 to 15 days. That's my testimony, Mr. Chairman. I'm prepared to answer any questions. All right, why don't we go have Mr. Cray and then Ms. Ms. Grandy. Mr. Cray, can you please tell us why the city of providence in this case the city council committee on finance should 
recommend approval of this proposal. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, I think Chief Mancini said it very well. Um, we have the opportunity due to market conditions to refund the 2010 bonds for debt service savings. Uh, in addition, as Chief Mancini said, we have gone out to bid for bond insurance, and it is highly likely that the benefit to the city's pricing in the bond market as a result of bond insurance will allow us to also refund the 2013 bonds for additional savings. Uh, but that remains to be seen based on what we get for bond insurance. The 2010s will be efficient to refund as shown here. This is without bond insurance. So we could potentially even gain uh, additional savings with bond insurance. Uh, I'm more than happy, Mr. Chairman, to answer any questions when the time's appropriate. Yes, um, Ms. Grandy, can you, um, you, you have the mic. Can you please explain why the City Council of Fairland should recommend this matter? Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, as bond counsel to the city, we would recommend that the city pursue any uh, refunding uh, that achieves at least a net present value savings of 3%, uh, which this refunding clearly does. And uh, so, therefore, we would recommend that you take the opportunity. Okay. Just very quickly, then I'm going to have the committee members ask questions. First, can you uh, tell me, Mr. Mancini, for my own identification, what's the difference, or Ms. Grandy or Mr. Craig, what's the difference between refinancing and refunding? So, Mr. Chairman, the correct legal term in the market is refunding. We use the word refinancing to give the impression that it is a similar activity that you would do in your own personal finances. If you were refinancing your home to take savings result of a smaller mortgage rate or a better term, you would be doing a refinancing in the, in the issuance of bonds, this is the terminology used known as a refunding. Number one, number two, the present bond is 2010A series. And when was that supposed to mature? Was it a 10-year bond, 20-year bond? How long was that bond for? 15? So yes, actually, had Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Yeah, Craig, go ahead. Mr. Craig. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, it was a 15-year bond. It matures um, on January 15, 2026. And then the 2013, are you saying you're looking to refund that bond or, you, or you're not? I'm little, I was a little confused on that. Yes. Um, Mr. Chairman, yes. we, are we believe we going can refund to part of it. Refund part. And when is that going to mature? Um, the 2013s were a 20-year bond. Um, we are looking at there are certain maturities, about $8.6 million, that have a 5% coupon, which obviously is a rather high coupon. Those maturities, that $8.6 million are potentially what could be refunded. And again, just like with the 10, 2010s, we will not extend the debt at all. Each of those maturities will have the same. Uh, we will not extend them at all. That's, so, and then the next question is, is the interest rate going down in the 2010 from blank to blank? And if so, what is it? And also for the 2013. Or is it just refunded? Yes. Can you tell us what the interest rate is for the 2010 and what, what it's going to? And then, yeah. okay. Um, on the 2010, the average coupon right now is 4.997%. And the projection, um, it's on the fourth line of the first page of that sheet. The projected uh, rate on the new bonds would be 1.641%. Okay. In the 2013? Um, on the 2013, Currently, the $8.6 million that we're looking at have a rate of 5%. Um, and if we can get them to be efficient to refund, uh, Mr. Chairman, we would be looking at a rate of uh, about 2.4%. Okay, thank you. I right, just want to get some house cleaning, how, some basic um, facts put on the table for everybody's edification. Councilwoman Anthony. Thank you, Mr. Muted. Chair. Yeah. Mr. Gray, I believe you said something about looking into bond insurance. Can you explain that? Yes, absolutely. Um, the uh, recent transactions we've done for the city have been through the Providence Public Buildings Authority. Um, and with those transactions, we went out to bid to the current bond insurers. And what they do is for a flat 
one time fee when we sell the bonds, they will basically insure the bonds, meaning that if for some reason the city were not to pay principal and interest to the bondholders, the bond insurer would step in and make your investors whole. Um, that bond insurance allows us to sell your bonds at a lower interest rate. So when we get the bids back from the bond insurers, what we do is we calculate how much we're paying as compared to how much lower a rate we'll be able to sell your bonds. And we make sure that the city is going to make out better with bond insurance than without. And that makes it more economically feasible for the city. Okay. And so just to follow up, so that's a calculation that needs to be made. And so there's no cost to that right now that you can report. Um, that's correct. The bond insurers, both, there are currently two bond insurers that are writing new policies. Both have expressed interest in the city. Both gave us their preliminary thoughts. We asked them to sharpen their pencils, told them what we were attempting to do. Um, and I expect hopefully as early as tomorrow to get bids back so we can do that calculations and share it with the city. Thank you. Yes. Um, city Treasurer, um, Special Agent Assistant, assistant uh, Jimmy Lombardi. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman, so just for the record, I do support the refinancing. Uh, I think that uh, uh, it's, it's you know, anytime we can save money, especially at this level, uh, it's a good thing. Um, there's some things, though, I want the, the committee to um, think about. Um, if we were to take the savings not in one year, but over the years, we would end up saving $48,850. And uh, that's a calculation by Mr. Craig. So instead of saying, okay, we're not gonna make the payment this year, we're going to make a reduced payment this year and then make the reduced payments going forward. Again, by doing that, we would save $48,850. The other thing that I would ask that this committee consider is to target the savings directly to the pension system. And it would have to be above the 100% uh, ARC payment. It would not be to supplant the payment. But I think that we're going to try to move to a, right now we have an 8% expected rate of return on our pension system. We need to go to 7%, or at least that's my, my opinion. Um, I think in doing that, we would have to uh, stretch, we would have to re -amortize um, to 30 years, but there would still be an increased payment. We're going to have to learn how to make that payment going forward um, to, to keep our um, retirement system solvent. This would move towards getting there, or at least a payment towards getting there. Um, just again, something for the committee to think about. Um, I, th I think the other uh, financial people uh, on the legislative side agree, uh, but you can ask them as well, Mr. Chairman. So, Mr. Mancini, um, can you tell us why the administration, this is when, you know, the rubber hits the road. Tell us um, the pros well, and Mr. cons Chairman, of this proposal. Chairman, while I note that um, Mr. Curry has pointed out that if you took the savings over the remaining life of the bond issue over the next five years, there would be a pickup of an additional 48000 Bear in mind that this transaction was done, A, for its efficiency, B, to enhance the cash flow of the city, and also to provide a budget savings in this year, FY21. And while we're getting closer to the time when I think we could adopt a city budget, as I understand they're getting closer at the state level, we would expect to rely on every bit of that 1.3 million to aid and assist us with closing the gap in the FY20 budget year. As to the treasurer's recommendation to find ways in which to better handle payments on the pension plan, we have already moved in that direction. I work tirelessly with our outside actuary to come to the conclusion, and I share this with your finance team, that we are now moving immediately from an 8% consumer return to 7%, immediate recognition, but the actuary has advised that we can continue with the current uh, implications for years 21 and 22, and we would begin immediately in 23 with the impact of the 7% change. This gives us time to reorder our budget 
to find budgetary solutions necessary to support that payment, I do believe, Mr. Chairman, that this would not be the time to do it. this savings. This savings should be fully dedicated to the FY21 budget, and it will be prudently applied. In fact, it will be applied to making the debt service payment that was called for subsequently. So while I, while I uh, note the Treasury's recommendations, uh, I can tell you that we are, in fact, moving in the right direction with the pension assumed rate of return, and that will show up in this valuation and will probably be as complete as it will be due before December 31st. Um, um, Treasurer, somebody? So, except that you're moving towards a 7% rate, but you're not paying it until the new mayor comes in. You need to, you need to start paying that immediately and, and not wait until a new mayor's in and put it on their budget. Um, I, I don't know why we would wait. So, Mr. Chairman, if I may, it's got nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with who the mayor would be. It's based upon a recommendation of the actuary who has agreed that the current position schedule with 20 years remaining is sufficient to meet the immediate change of recognition while phasing in the impact. This is the first time in perhaps ever, but I know that at least in my time, maybe 35 years and maybe longer, that we have adopted a single one action, one full point change to the assumed rate of return. The last time we did that, the impact was the chairman was 4 million on, a, on 50 basis points, a half point, there has to be a reordering of the budget. It would not be prudent or appropriate in this budget year yet to be adopted, affected by COVID-19 reduced revenues, allowing the finance administration of the city to at least reset the budget in doing so. And we recommended that uh, as part of the actuary's recommendations and we accepted that recommendation. And I believe it's the right thing to do and it's prudent to do. It has little to do, nothing to do with who the next mayor will be, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mancini. Mr. Mancini, just for everybody's edification, in order to lower the rate of return, what body or what entity does that? The rate of return on the, on the pension uh, account. What body does that? It's a recommendation by the actuary that's filed with the administration, in the case of the finance department, which then is presented to the retirement board. So the, reti the retirement board would make that determination to lower the rate of return or not? Right? That is correct. Okay. Next. Actually, and, and the administration. But the retirement board would vote yes or no to do that. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, internal order. Then um, uh, consultant Ernie Almonte. Internal order. Hi, good evening. Um, yes, I am in agreement with uh, Jim as far as uh, um, savings. Um, but I do have one thing to note. Um, in the operating report that was just provided uh, for October. They have already taken a $1.3 million savings, but they have no decreases in their expenses. They have been making essential spendings only. So I took the next step and I did a comparison of year over year. There is about a, a $5.6 million in savings that's not accounted for on the operating report. Understandably, I understand the challenge that we meet in January from the state, but you either meet it or you don't, you can't have it both ways. So I support of putting this into the pension fund. So Mr. Chairman, if I may, the recognition of the state, recognition of the savings has been used to identify the reduction in revenues that we're already seeing in the city budget based upon those revenues we talked about previously, including changes in parking revenue, Bills and beverage, hotel tax, and now even building an inspection. We've seen a reduction in those fees based on the latest information. And again, uh, a sound reason why anytime there's an opportunity to generate a savings, we should take that opportunity. Ernie Almonte, the consultant, then Vice Chair, Majority Leader Ryan. Mr. Almonte? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Along with the Treasurer and the, the City Auditor, I do agree. Um, and advice to support the refunding of the bonds. Um, I also highly recommend and support the treasurer's recommendation to put the additional savings into the pension plan. You have over a billion dollar unfunded liability and every little bit that we go after trying to reduce that liability will help the city. And if you use the assumed rate of return that we talk about all the time, whether it's 8% or lower to seven and lower, and I certainly advise them to continue to lower it, 
But even at 7%, we'd be earning 7% on $1.3 million if you're a pension plan. And we're going to get 7% on your money. So I recommend you put the additional savings into the pension plan the same way the treasurer did. And on that, I mean, on top of the annual required contribution, not supplementing what was already put in there. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair, Majority Leader Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you all. Uh, that was a great presentation. You answered a lot of questions. Um, in the beginning, I believe um, Chairman Mancini spoke about um, the format um, of the, what is before us as a resolution, and that was acceptable. I kind of missed that explanation. And, and I'm actually, and I think it was you, Mr. Mancini, I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm wondering why it's not in the form of an ordinance. Um, that's my first question. Um, I would like to affirm what our um, finance team has articulated. Um, I do support the refunding. I think it's prudent. I think it's good work. Um, I want to thank um, Karen Grandy. I want to thank Anna Frey. Um, Again, you know, looking out for us, making sure um, that we're taking advantage of the market um, and looking for savings at every corner. So I, I commend the, the effort. I remember we did this um, oh, a few years back and we saved uh, about $2 million. Um, so I, I applaud um, the administration for always looking for ways to, to find some savings particularly when our market, um, our rates are so attractive uh, and we have an opportunity to do this. But I also want to reaffirm our uh, treasury team's um, uh, recommendation, if you will, that we these savings are precious. Uh, we're in a particularly challenging financial times, time and uh, I do believe we should focus on targeting our savings toward our biggest financial obligation in a way that is most impactful and meaningful for us, as opposed for, to using this for general obligation. Um, so uh, basically affirming what our treasury team has stated, but most for, first and foremost, um, why isn't this in a form of, res, of an ordinance and why wouldn't we include um, in that format, in an ordinance, um, uh, our expectation of how these dollars will be best utilized to serve this, this, the uh, city's obligation. Thank you. Um, Councilwoman, I can uh, speak to One the second. forum. One second, Ms. Granny. Surely. Mr. Mancini? Mr. Mancini, did you want to speak or did Ms. Granny? Oh, I, I, would your hand up for us. I would defer Ms. Granny? to Ms. Granny, you have the mic. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Rhode Island general laws permit uh, refunding approvals to be uh, documented either as an ordinance or as a resolution, uh, whichever suits the particular community. Under the Providence Home Rule Charter, uh, there are processes that require a bond ordinance if you're incurring new debt uh, for capital expenditures, uh, but does not require an ordinance for any other reason. Uh, so other types of indebtedness uh, are permissible to be authorized by resolution. Thank you. That's what I thought. I remember having this conversation the last time we did this, um, but I was confused in the intro that was provided. So thank you for the clarification. Surely. I'm good. I'm good, Mr. Chair. Any so there's nothing that precluding us from putting this in the form of an ordinance and also including some controls on, unless well, it could be done some other way. Well, you, to the extent um, that the city council uh, wanted to include language, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's an ordinance or a resolution that could be done um, in a resolution as well. But most importantly, in order to uh, achieve the schedule uh, and the debt service savings uh, on the timing that the city is looking to do so with the debt service payment coming up in January. Uh, I think that if we uh, did it as an ordinance, we, we wouldn't make that time frame. So for that reason alone, I would recommend 
uh, that it be approved as a resolution and not as an ordinance. Thank you. I'm good, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair. Any other comments or questions? Committee members? Mr. Mancini? So, Mr. Chairman, if I may, to you and your committee members, the leader, the treasurer, the internal auditor, and your consultant, I ask that you consider the administration's position that this identification of savings was done in earnest and with prudence to help make a save of the yet to be adopted FY21 budget. As to additional pension considerations, let me assure this committee, the last four years, while we have earned early pension savings and could have taken that as a reduction to the general fund expenditures, we chose not to. We kept those savings into the pension plan, demonstrating exactly what the city treasurer, the city auditor, and the outside consultant has suggested. In this one instance, this entire transaction was predicated on the ability to provide the city to balance the general fund if need be, given these unusual COVID-19 budget impacts. And this would not be the transaction that I would recommend to single out to support additional pension interest savings or pension payment to their pension. Not at this time. We have already undertaken, we have already taken, which I think extreme prudence and with consort with your internal order and treasurer, the notion in one action to identify this, the reduction from 8% to 7 and no different than four years ago when we reduced it by a half a point. It took two years to implement that change as a budgetary burden. It cannot be done in one move, despite any savings elsewhere. I ask the committee to accept the transaction in its current format as it will be dedicated to the FY21 budget as a budget savings, which is necessary. Thank you, Mr. Appreciate Mancini. your time. Thank you, Mr. Almonte, then Mr. Lombardi. Mr. Chairman, my only question is um, in the conversation of whether it's an ordinance or resolution, and I understand Karen Grandy's uh, comment about it's okay to do it in a resolution. My only question about that is the savings part, to go, if you decide to put it into the pension plan, is a resolution strong enough to do that? And, and maybe you need to ask your own counsel what he thinks. I don't know the answer. I'm just asking. Mr. Lombardi. Um. So I don't, I, I agree, um, uh, Mr. Almonte, that we would not have the legal authority to force them to do that, even if it wasn't a resolution, in my opinion. But I would, I would expect Mr. Mancini would follow through with what the resolution says, um, whether or not it's, it's, it's the legal, it's the will of the council, clearly. But let me, let, so, I've given my recommendation. Um, I stand by it, but I, let me. Uh, but I, I've heard the CFO. Um, what would happen if we were to put it in savings? Would go into an account for the first benefit if we run a shortfall on the budget next year. But if we have a four, so let's say a four million dollar surplus, does it matter if we have a four million or a five point three million? Let's put the one point mil. 3 million into the pension system. It, so there's almost no harm, no foul at this one. While I don't dispute one, that. One second, Mr. Mancini, one second. Ms. Grandy was gonna have a comment, then Mr. Mancini. Ms. Grandy? Well, um, I wanted to observe that if you don't designate uh, the particular use for this money right now in this action, that gives you the flexibility to include it in the budget as the budget is adopted, or when you're looking at the big picture, when you're looking at the budget, to if you determine at that time that you have, you know, that a portion, some or all of it, maybe none of it, uh, but you can make that decision in connection with the budgetary process. So I'm not sure why you would want to uh, today with this particular action tie your hands. Thank you. Mr. Man Mr. Mr. Mancini, then Mr. Lombardi. Mr. Mancini. Well, Mr. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, I, um, I applaud Ms. Grandy's um, wisdom, and I would uh, in so many I, ways suggest... I'm reminded that... to be mindful of the time because um, I am. make matters brief, please. I am, and I would be more than happy to enhance if there was a 4.0 surplus at year end versus a 5.2 savings. 
to do the same thing. I want to remind the committee that each of the last four years, while there has been a additional savings by making early pension payments, while one could have taken that as an additional surplus or reduction elsewhere, it went right back into the pension plan under strict discipline. We would continue to do the same thing with the generation of early pension savings. And I hope that we can get back on making large payments again once there's an adopted budget. We only made one $10 million payment in August. And the committee should know that we have completed the FY20 outstanding balance by making a $20 million or thereabouts completion last Monday. We have fully completed the FY20 pension obligation that was due at June 30, but we would wait until the pilot money would have been received ordinarily. But we did do that in time to complete it before the audit was finished. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I ask for your courtesy in listening taking Ms. Grandy's okay. advice, yeah. not putting a restriction on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Grandy. Just, so, just for everybody's edification, you're saying that we finally made the payments for our FY19 no, FY20. FY20 budget. That's right? correct. So, that's, so, we're that, so we're many months behind that obligation because the state has the state given its full contribution that we were expecting? What was it, 30 some odd million? Did the state ever give us that money? We have only received five twelfths of it thus far. We received fourteen million. Okay, so the, so the state is still behind in its obligation to us from la for last year's budget, correct? That is correct. Okay. But we have complete. Well, we have completed I know, I know. our own cash flow, the full payment. But I know, but but for FY nineteen, FY twenty, so we're still behind, and we still made late payments. Anyway, no. we still made late payments. No, we, no. No, we fully we made them later. But we have yeah. fully completed that payment that was due at June 30. Right. While so there was, while there was, was some, completed in July, was completed in July. But there was some interest that we accrued because of the state not Absolutely. giving us money, right? Absolutely. So therefore, we have late interest payments that was accrued because of the state not giving, fulfilling its obligation to the city, and then put us behind. That's a fact. Absolutely. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I, I just want to, so I don't. I don't get too deep, deep into the. That pension conversation, we're going to bring you all back for that conversation about lowering the rate of return and all that wonderful stuff and what it really means and, and what, it will, what kind of impact, negative impact, it will have on the city's pension system. But Mr. Man, Mr. Lombardi, and then we'll go from there. Mr. Lombardi. So, Mr. Chairman, as the senior advisor, I would like to tell you, or just advise you that if it's not in this document, it'll never be put in the budget or anything else. So I would strongly suggest that if you were choosing to do something, um, any of the recommendations I made, they would have to be in this, but they would have to be in this resolution. Okay. Committee members, you've heard the, the pros and cons. What is your pleasure? <sighs> Mr. Chair, I, I'm, I'm hearing both sides. My inclination is to uh, support the recommendation of our finance team. Um, it's $1.3 million. What is, by the way, what is it costing us um, to refund? What is the out, uh, outlay um, in just operational costs to, to achieve that $1.3 million savings? The costs are already included in the net savings. The, the cost to get to 1.3 was 116000 but what the 1.3 is the net savings. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh, I, I, you know, I read the mayor's uh, uh, press release today touting the fact that, uh, you know, we're not kicking the can down the road. Um, we're addressing our challenges. Um, I think it's incumbent upon us to, uh, to be very prudent about the challenges, the overwhelming challenges that face this city. Um, and I do believe that our finance team is indicating that we target the savings to our biggest financial uh, challenge. Um, and I do think it should be referenced in the document. Um, you know, that's how I feel. That's my opinion, Mr. Chair. I'd like to include it. I get the fact that they don't want to do an ordinance. Um, the ordinance to me buttons it up. It states exactly where, how we're going to operate, what we're going to do with the savings. That's why I asked that question. Uh, so do we have I'll acquiesce. I'll acquiesce. I'm sorry. Do you have a motion to amend this item number four? 
Are you trying to move this along quickly, Mr. Chairman? I've never known you to do this in a meeting. <laughs> well, no, the, the, the issue, I'm just because of the timing of the, any meeting for the council on Wednesday. That's all. So I'm okay, just, I'm I, just, got you. So I got you. I got you. I make a motion to amend the resolution to include the language as recommended by our finance team to target the savings that are realized through this refunding effort. Okay, do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Councilman Castillo. Discussion? Mr. Lombardi. Mr. Chairman, just for clarification, is that that the um, that would be the payment above 100% of the annual required contribution, correct? Yes. What happens if next year we run a shortfall? So if the budget shortfalls, are we making this payment anyway, or are we going to... I mean, we're going to make the payment, but the last payment maybe is reduced if we were to run a deficit. But that's totally up to you. I, I'm trying to work with the CFO on this. But is there language the that is acceptable on um, that um, Mr. Lombardi and Mr. Mancini can work on together to achieve that end? Madam Leader, yes, I can work with Karen Grandy on it. Okay. We, we need it tonight. No, I know. We, we, if we're going to do it, we have, to, we have to make the amendment tonight. Yeah. The language can't be worked on and come back. So here's the question. Do you have, do you, what well, the language that the vice chair has proposed was seconded. Is there a request to fix that, or change that language and tweak it? If there is, please explain and be specific at this time. Mr. Mancini, then Mr. Lombardi. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask you with all of my years of experience and my credibility, which is impeccable. Please allow the administration to manage the city budget. This item was intended to free up savings that did not exist before this evening to assist us, the city council and the administration, to help us adopt the budget and manage the budget under highly unusual, significantly reduced budget considerations. We have never gone through a pandemic, ever. To restrict this, takes one of those tools from all of us. I will ask you again to reconsider the action and to allow this transaction to be completed as was expected, knowing full well that the administration is responsible and prudent and knows what to do with budgetary savings. Certainly if we have additional opportunities at year end because of early pension payments, like we have done for the past five years, it will be put back on the pension plan as we have demonstrated each of those past five years. We have already demonstrated the significant knowledge of taking the current assumed rate of return of 8%, and that's a harrowing decision, and bring it down to 7%. And while it may be phased in over two years, it will take those two budget years to reset the budget. We're already through FY21 theoretically. We're already working on FY22. On Wednesday, we do the fiscal 22 budget workshop for departments whose budget will be turned in the first week of February. We will need the FY22 budget. You said it yourself during all of the 21 budget hearings. We'll need 22 just to reset the city budget based on reduced revenues and expenses that must be cut. This is a tool that was necessary to reset city finances that have yet to be adopted, to put a restriction on it. Mr. Chairman, Madam Leader, in my humble opinion, is the wrong action. While I appraise the action, this is the wrong action at this time. Um, comment? Um, I, I mean, I oh, find, my... yeah, Mr. Chairman, I mean, I find that a little insulting that you're calculated, calculating it into the budget without the council voting on it yet. So, so my statement is that the responsible thing to do is to put it in and pay it over years not balance this year's budget and then not have the savings in future years when this administration isn't around. That's a ridiculous idea. Now I'm saying, well, if you are going to have savings, let's target it. That's all. Let's target it towards the pension system. It's Mr. simple Mr. Chairman, I have targeted. One second. I, I'm out. Mr. I have second. targeted. Mr. Lombardi, you done? Um, I just, I have language if you need it for the amendment. Right. Mr. Mancini? Well, well, right now, just, you know, we're still in the, just simply identification. There was an emotion to amend with a second and went discussion. Mr. Mancini? 
Mr. Chairman, I have targeted. I've targeted to a yet to be adopted budget that we yet to know what reductions still we might have to make based on reduction of revenues. I am targeting. I'm providing it as a measure and means in which we can adopt a balanced budget. That's exactly what we're doing with it. That's exactly what we're doing with it. It's meant to be no insult to the council or your advisors. This is what's at hand today, not a June 30 payment that would be due on the pension plan that we have to wait for the state to make our appropriation in July, as is typical. We have to adopt a budget soon. It won't be tonight, but it'll be around the corner, and it may not be adopted before the next payment of debt service is due on January 15th, which is what this refunding is about. It's sparing the debt service payment due January 15th. I am targeting that, in my humble opinion. Vice Chair Ryan? I'd like to hear the um, language being proposed by Mr. Lombardi. Mr. Lombardi? So, obviously, this is subject to Karen Grandy's approval, but, I mean, in, in, in num so if you were to go to number N, item number 10, it would say something like this. The council hereby, hereby directs the finance director to pay any net savings from the refinancing of the bond period. Uh, it shall be used to pay the pension payment above 100% of the annual required contribution and can, cannot supplant any pension payments. Ms. Grandy? I, mean, I don't um, find any objection with the, the format of the language. I, I think the, the more important issue is the, uh, the, the policy issue. Okay, so then if Vice Chair, if you're looking to do that, then we need to withdraw our second and our first and then make a new motion to amend. That's what we're looking to do. Withdraw my first. All right, uh, Councilman C Castile, do you withdraw your second? Yes. All right, All right. thank you. Okay. Do we have a new motion? Yes, Mr. Chair, at your pleasure. Um, I make a, a motion to amend this resolution utilizing the languages specified by uh, Mr. Lombardi um, at the rec recommendation of the council's finance team um, amend the document on um, with that language. Thank you. Okay. Madam Clerk, did you get the language of the treasurer? I Madam have, Clerk? I have some of it and I will ask the treasurer to please email that to me as soon as possible. All right. Do we have a second? Do have a second? Second. Uh, second by Council to Steele. Discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All, right. All opposed. So the, the resolution has been amended. Now, a motion to rec or is it recommend approval as amended. Do I have to hear that motion? Motion to recommend approval as amended. All right, Vice Chair. Second. All right, Council to Steele. Discussion, Mr. Lombardi. Can you just say in substantial form so that Ms. Grandy, if she has any uh, technical changes, she can make those? Um, yeah. I will make that a, a motion to uh, recommend approval as amended in the language uh, to be in substantial form. So I have a second. Okay. By Council Castile. Let the uh, discussion, let the record reflect that Council Castile withdraw her previous second and vice chair withdrew her previous motion. Is that correct, committee yes. members? Yes. yes. Thank you. So now discussion on this motion. Seconded by Council Castillo. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you, motion count. So this now goes before the full council on Wednesday, Madam Clerk? Okay. Last item on the docket, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, me. Mr. Mancini. Resolution authorizing approval of the following contract award by the Board of Contract and Supply in accordance with Section 21-26A of the Code Award to the Downs Construction Company. Thank you. So last we met, we had some outstanding questions about concerning this matter. I want to get a couple things first out of the way. Is City Solicitor, City Solicitor on, on with us? Yes, I am, Mr. Chair. 
Last time we checked, we want let's let's talk about the procurement process first, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chevrini. That was uh, that was one of the big priorities. Uh, we asked this committee asked the city solicitor's office to review it and and to give us uh, an assessment of its um, uh, if if it was followed correctly and procedurally, and that uh, we wouldn't be um, exposed to any type of um, um, what do you call it. Um, protest by any of the, in the other parties that did not get the award. Mr. And, and Mr. Mr. Yeah, as a, after the, after the meeting, I did alert the staff in the solicitor's office who handles such matters. Uh, they did review uh, the process and, and did have a conversation with Ms. Day. Uh, after reviewing the process, um, I was told that there would be, uh, the process was followed consistent with state law, state law and the procurement process. And uh, they, there was not a concern that there would be any bid uh, challenges uh, based upon the actions that were taken relative to this matter. Thank you, Mr. Sherry. Committee members, do you have any questions about that particular issue at this time? No, sir. Thank you, Vice Chair of Council of Steel. Okay, Ms. Day, have you been sworn in yet? No. Ms. Day, and then you can now can follow up on what this proposal is. Madam Clerk, please swear in Ms. Day. Chief Barrett, penalty of perjury, that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God. I do. Please state your name and title for the record. Jordan Day, Senior Deputy Chief Operating Officer for the City of Providence. Okay. So, Ms. Day, we're just going to recap, uh, recap a little bit. Can you just very quickly explain uh, quickly the process, explain to us why this is even, why um, is the city even considering hiring an owner's rep, any owner's rep, not only this one, any owner's rep for this, for this uh, matter, um, and wh what's the um, rationale why we're doing it now, are there any perils for not doing it, et cetera, what's the pros and cons? Also then, can you take us um, and explain to us why did, um, I guess, the committee, the technical review committee, went with the highest bidder? Um, and that's my, just, uh, just for your identification, you guys used the state's MPA, which means they're all qualified, and then you went through the, your bid process to, a, I guess, a technical proposal aspect. So, and then you awarded to the highest bidder. So then you can answer, explain that process and how did you get to that? How did, how did the city get to that particular award? So, why don't we start at the beginning, get to the middle, and to the end. Ms. Day, you have the mic. Okay. Um, I shared some of this information with counselors ahead of this meeting, but just to review what I shared in writing. Um, previously, Gilbane served as the city's owners program manager and construction manager. In 2018, Rhode Island general law changed and required that the OPM and construction management services be overseen by different entities. Um, when that happened, the city brought on Coast and Harbor to serve in that capacity. Their contract expired in June of 2020, which led to the city going back out to bid for those services. Um, and, and just to be clear that that contract was not eligible for extension at that point in time. It had previously been extended already. Um, the amendment to Rhode Island general law additionally also required the OPM sign off on all projects that are eligible for reimbursement over 1.5 million before they can be submitted to the school building authority for reimbursement. At this time, we're not able to submit reimbursement on about $3 million worth of project expenses due to not having an OPM on board. Um, these expenses will become ineligible for reimbursement if we do not have an OPM certify this work and will need to be paid by the city for full costs associated with those projects um, should we not get the appropriate sign off. Additionally, if we were not to award a contract at this time, there would be impacts to our pay go approval. Um, going back out to this bid for these services means that the city would not have an OPM on board for at least another two to three months, halting all projects that exceed $1.5 million from beginning. There would be no telling really what the overall impact is in the long run, but it's absolutely certain that we would not achieve our required spending goal of 60 million by December 31, 2021, a deadline that's put in place by the state. Um, so that would impact our overall PAYGO approval and those funds would be redistributed to other cities and towns that are in need. Uh, and looking at qualifications, Downs was the only firm that responded that had a similar program management experience 
Colliers and Jacobs had overseen capital programs as large as $83 million and $150 million, respectively, but provided no examples that were similar to Providence's scale, nearly $300 million. Um, I found out after we had already selected the, the award and, and made the award to the Board of Contract and Supply that the, the project reference for Collier's highest capital project had just begun. So they've only been under contract for a few months now. Um, and Jacob, the project reference in their bid actually never came to fruition. They did get awarded a contract with Cranston, but not any higher than what they had previously stated. So still about 150 million. Um, in project experience and references, Downs included their in their bid response that they had been part of a team overseeing approximately 1 billion in school capital improvements for the city of Hartford, which is a similarly sized city and school district. The program manager that was assigned to the city of Providence in Downs' bid response was also responsible for the oversight of that program. They currently have approximately $250 million worth of capital work happening in the city of Hartford. When looking at project specifics, they handled a $92 million renovation for MLK Middle School that's located in Hartford. <laughs> um, I think every city might have one. Um, and that's comparable <laughs> to our $75 million investment that we're proposing for 21 Peach Street, should that be approved by the SBA. Um, additionally, they addressed capital improvements in schools with specialized programming. So they had arts programming and language programs that they catered to. And so that's similar to schools that we have that we're focusing on right now, like Pleasant View and Leviton as uh, comparable examples. Uh, lastly, in the 60 days that Downs was on board to provide services to the city previously, they identified at least $2 million in expenses that would have previously not qualified for reimbursement. Um, the projects would have invested in funds in staging equipment and temporary classrooms for swing space, which is not an eligible reimbursement expense, but a necessary one. Um, by working with our construction management team, they were able to invest that $2 million directly into educational spaces instead, um, which means that those funds would then be eligible for reimbursement. Well, this is just one example of what they've already done. I believe that we will see similar results of what they could do um, should they be awarded this contract. Thank you. Comments, questions, the committee members? Yes, Mr. Chair, if I may. Yep, Vice Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Day, for that explanation. Um, could you just kindly, uh, for the record, explain what uh, OPM actually does in, in just broad general terms, nothing detailed? Um, so this, they manage the goal? overall. They manage the program schedule, contracting, um, and, and facilitate all of those purchases. They oversee contracts in um, association and coordination with city staff like myself in order to be able to execute the capital plan. They also help us manage the financial transactions related to that as well. So there's a budgetary component that they help us execute. Um, additionally, they help us maintain an open line of communication with the Rhode Island Department of Education. Um, and, and Ride was the one that advocated for that state law change in 2018, um, which is how this became a requirement. Okay, thank you. And just um, another question, when, um, when did we go out? Uh, so I understand Coast and Harbor contract ended June 2020. When did we go out with um, the RFP? I believe it was April. Um, I, I did not look up the specific date because I, I did ask for that. Uh, I mentioned it last time we were here. Um, so my apologies for not having that, but okay. I believe it was April. Just generally, that's fine. So um, in April, but it was before, before that contract expired, um, yep. but with the pandemic, uh, the teams that the team members that were scoring were focusing on pandemic response. And so there were some delays. Okay. So in anticipation of the contract coming to conclusion, you went out and you did an RFP. Okay, and that's yeah. what's before us. And Coast and Harbor did not respond to the RFP? They did not respond to school, uh, any school capital project program management. They only responded to city capital project program management um, and they were not awarded that contract. Okay, so I guess um, not to go back and relive the, uh, the meeting that we had previously, um, our, our concern was you know, these, these, um, these, all of the respondents were on the MPA list. Um, so they're qualified to respond. Um, 
So I guess our issue was largely, why did you pick the highest bidder? Because <laughs> you know, we're, our anticipation is you go the other way. Um, everything I know about it says go the other way. Um, but in this testimony tonight, you have um, articulated that um, this, the size, the breadth, the depth of the uh, resources that Downs provides us um, is what is appealing to, to the scorers. Um, all right, I, I get it. I understand now. Um, I certainly did not get that the first go round. Um, but I am um, pleased, um, Mr. Chair, that you asked the solicitor to review this matter um, to make sure that uh, we get some comfort level. Um, while I remain concerned that the amount is higher than I would like to see the difference from the other bidders, um, I, at least I understand your rationale in selecting them. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? General order, solicitor, um, consultant, Mr. Lombardi. Okay. Do we have a um, Do we have a motion on this matter? Yes, Mr. Chair. Based on the um, the testimony of uh, of Ms. Day um, and the uh, opinion of our solicitor, um, I would make a recommendation uh, to approve this uh, to the full council. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Castillo. Vice Chair, Majority Leader Ryan made the motion. Further discussion? I would just say that in the future, I think it's um, when you're dealing with these types of situations, more information is better, um, a better um, understanding uh, of explaining exactly what the city's trying to do, um, more um, explaining all the facts, the journey, the legality, the process, um, that has to be done in a front loaded. You know, you can explain it, you can explain all that at the very beginning of the process. It'll be very helpful. What happens in these situations is that when committee members are being asked to make serious decisions, in this case, about multi million dollar decisions, and they don't have all the resources or facts or information before them, or, um, or the individuals who are presenting not, don't have all that info available, it causes consternation with the committee members because they get concerned, are they making the right decision? Are they, are they just, uh, are they just rubber stamping something? And are they just passing along? And, and the finance committee takes the city's finances very serious, as you can tell, I'm sure you all know. Um, and the most important thing is full disclosure and a full understanding of what exactly is being asked of this committee, which then is then eventually being asked of the council. So I thank you for, you know, for the further explanation and the city solicitor. I also ask the city solicitor in the future, when these types of big contracts in particular, and it's a procurement process that even sounds peculiar at all, I'd ask you to um, be proactive and get ahead of it so we have a better understanding, the committee can say, listen, well, the law, the law department went through it, we went through this process, and we feel confident that there will not be a big protest. We feel confident that the process was followed. Um, the committee does not want to be part and parcel to, uh, and by just pure mistakes of people that may make because of not knowing this, the system. So, City Solicitor, do you recognize our request? Absolutely, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. With that, um, any further discussion? No, Mr. Chair, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Um, thank you all um, for participating this evening. Um, hope you all be safe, be well. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion adjourned by Vice Chair, Mayor Leader, second by Council Castillo. Discussion, Madam Clerk, do you want to say when the next council meeting, next co full council meeting, I think will be on Wednesday, and uh, committee members, will be special council meeting on Wednesday, 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 Wednesday with at least these two items on it for the clerk. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you all. You all.